for that new horror movie, Tarot. This one right here. Let's talk about it. Again, the movie's called Tarot, directed by Anna Hallberg and Spencer Cohen. It's their directorial debut. And it stars... Honestly, it doesn't matter who it stars. There are six principals in this movie, and you might remember two of their names. This movie's about a group of college friends who are at a mansion Airbnb for one of their friend's birthday. They are exploring the house, looking for more beer, and end up finding this divination room where all this old stuff is. And in that room is a box with tarot cards. The tarot cards in the box are sitting behind a glass. That should have been clue number one. One of the people, Haley, just so happens to be into divination, astrology, star reading, and all that jazz, and can also read tarot. And it's like, no, we shouldn't do this. It's like an unspoken rule. You shouldn't play with someone else's deck. But they decide to do it anyway, reads everyone's horoscope. And as you know from seeing the trailer, they start to get picked off one by one based on their readings. I think it was my TikTok on Barbarian where I mentioned how scary movies, writing scary movies, doing scary movies, it's a different skill set. The key to scary, it's not, you know, dark lighting, it's not creepy music. You can scare people without all of that. It's not even jump scares or coming around the corner, tight framing, it's character development. You've got to give the audience time to build a relationship with the characters allow them to have a bond let us get to know them let us see their personalities their day-to-days let us give us a reason to root for them give us a reason to care because if i don't care about these characters i don't care what happens to them it's just not scary fear is an emotion like anything else and you have to manufacture and manipulate it in a screenplay and the best way to do that is character development there is no character development we're just watching these kids get picked off one by one, and I don't care. There's one guy, though, one character, whom we get to know a little bit because he's the only one that seems to have any kind of personality. You know, you kind of fall in love with him a little bit. He's the dope of the group. And when we get to what happens to him, honestly, it's the scariest part of the whole movie. I'm rooting for him to get away. I don't care about any, anyone else in this movie. Had this movie been a little bit longer, it's about an hour and a half, give or take, um, had this movie been a little bit longer and we'd spent more time getting to know these kids in their everyday, because it, it starts and then it's, it's boom, 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 boom. Like we're into the, you know, taking out one by one very, very quickly. We barely get to register their names. We really don't, we don't know what school they're in. Um, we know they're kind of on the cusp of graduation. So we have a good idea as to how old they are. We don't know where they are, somewhere in the Northeast. I looked up one of the station cause we see the name of a, a subway station in the movie. And it looks like they might be somewhere near Boston. I don't know. There's so many things about these characters. We just don't know. And when you're left in the dark and the unknown, you really, and you don't care. It's not scary. It's just not. And I know I sound frustrated because I am. The concept in and of itself is pretty cool. I mean, this isn't anything new. It's, you know, part of a subgenre, which if it has a name, I don't know it, where we see, you know, young people, high school, college age kids getting into things they have no business getting into. You know, Ouija is the first one that comes to mind. You know, playing around with things they have no business playing with, and now there are consequences. It's like an offshoot of the ghost story. There's always some sort of lore or history attached to it. Larson Thompson is in this, which was, you know, fun to see her face. Because I remember when she was like itty bitty dancing on YouTube with um, Wildebeest and Taylor Hatala. Joseph Bashira does the original music here. He's becoming kind of the go-to guy for scary music. He's done, I think, three or four out of the Insidious movies. He's done um, music for Annabelle, a couple of the Annabelle movies and The Conjuring. I'm also wondering if he starred in this at all because again, he's your go-to guy for music for scary movies, but he's also your go-to guy if you need a monster. So he was the um, the demon with, the man with fire on his face. The, um, I think they call it the lipstick demon in Insidious. He was, um, he's Volok. The nun, the demon nun in The Conjuring. I don't think he was the demon nun in the nun movies, but I know he was in The Conjuring. And he was also the demon in Annabelle. You know when they're, she's trying to, or he or she or whoever's trying to go upstairs and there's that thing crawling? That's him. 
the tarot cards kind of come to life and I'm wondering if he had a hand in any of that. Finding that out would be exciting for me, much more exciting than this movie was. This was disappointing. I feel like at the end of the year, I'm going to have a list that's titled, Great Idea, Poor Execution. I've lost count how many movies I've seen so far this year, and I've seen a lot of movies. I think this is like number 48, I think, of movies that I've seen in theaters and streaming. And I've lost count how many movies I've seen. Great Idea, Poor Execution. This could have been excellent. Instead, it was just an absolute waste of my time.